What is up everybody? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you've been good. I'm sorry for my absence for the last month or so. I was on vacation and I had a great time but now I'm back. I'm here ready to film a new video for you guys. So in today's video I'm going to be starting a new series that I would like to start on this channel. Um, I'm not sure what to call it yet. I've been kind of workshopping the name for this series. For now I'm thinking of calling it Bag of Dicks instead of Bag of Tricks, Bag of Dicks. Does that make sense? I don't know, you guys let me know in the comments if you like that name or if you come up with any other clever names. Here's like the overview of how the series is going to work. So, in the past I've always kind of struggled with finding the right sort of packer, the right sort of toys per se, things that work for me, for my body, for my anatomy. There are some trans guys online who post you know, in-depth pack reviews and things like that. Basically, I just wanted to come on and give my own personal opinion about some of the products that I have tested and tried for years and years, uh, what packers I recommend, what toys or packers I don't recommend, things like that. Yeah, that's basically the entire series. So, like I said, I'm thinking of calling it Bag of Dicks instead of Bag of Tricks. I thought it was like a nice little play on words type situation. But if you think you can come up with something better than that, please, I'm all ears. Leave it in the comments below. Let me know what names you can come up with. Anyways, the way that I kind of want to run this series is I'm literally just going to go through each product that I own and I've used in the past. However, um, I'm going to be rating certain aspects of the packer or the toy or whatever it is on a scale of 1 to 10. And the different factors that we're going to be rating on a scale of 1 to 10 include affordability, variability, durability, wearability, realisticness. I, I googled it. Realisticness is a real word. So... And uh, lastly is usability. Like I said, all of that is going to be rated on a scale of 1 to 10, and then at the end of the entire review, we're going to like average them all together, and we'll give you the overall score for the packer or the toy or whatever it is. Today, we're going to be going over the Peacock Gen 3S 5.5 inch packer. Now, this is technically a 3-in-1 packer. I've been using this packer since probably 2019, I want to say. So around like 3 or 4 years, I've used it. Off and on, I've um, not been very consistent with it just because I don't really pack on a daily basis. Um, I've made a video about that in the past, you can go watch that. And I'm not sure how much I'm able to get away with on YouTube as far as like community guidelines go. So I'm not going to be showing you guys like the actual packer. Um, I will be providing links to everything that I talk about, uh, you know, the company Peacock, the specific packer we're talking about and all that stuff down in the description of this video. So you're more than welcome to go take a look yourself. However, I just don't want these videos to get flagged or taken down, so I don't think I'm going to be showing anything too graphic on this specific video. However, it is the first one, so we'll just kind of see how it goes, see what can stay up and what gets taken down, and then we'll kind of go from there. We're not going to be looking at it here so much as analyzing it in this video. So, like I said, I have the 5.5 inch cut version, so it is circumcised, and it is in the beige colorway. Along with the actual packer itself, I also have the Gen 2 Pleasure Rod with the like lips attachment on it. Uh, and like I said, we'll be talking about that later on, but that's just like a basic overview of everything that I'm going to be reviewing from Peacock in this video. So, first category is affordability. How affordable is it and is it worth it for the price? The packer itself costs 189 US dollars. Then on top of that, if you want to use First class priority USPS shipping, that's an extra $17. Then, if you want to go ahead and buy a pleasure rod like the one that I have, that's another $39. So, that gives us a total of $245 for the entire package. The packer, the shipping, and the pleasure rod, obviously. That is on like the higher range. I've seen packers that sell for upwards of $600, uh, but you know, $245 is pretty pricey. And for reasons that we'll get into later on in this video, I would say that it's not really worth the price for what you get. On the affordability scale, we're going to go ahead and give the Gen 3S Packer from Peacock a 4 out of 10. Okay, so the next category after, affordabil after affordability that we're going to take a look at is variability. So like I said, I have the 5.5 inch and it is also the circumcised model. They do have circumcised and uncircumcised models, but only for specific sizes. They have a 3.75 inch model, but that one only comes in circumcised. Then you can get 4.75 inch models and you can get that model in both circumcised and uncircumcised. Then of course you have mine, but mine only comes in circumcised and the 6.5 inch only comes with circumcised as well. It's beige, 
light beige, and then we have light, moderate, and dark brown. Five colorways, five different sizes to choose from. I would say that that's a pretty good range for variability. So it's going to get a very high score for me. I'm going to give it a 7.5 out of 10. I docked points because if you wanted, say, this 3.75 inch model, but you wanted it circumcised, you're shit out of luck. Um, but yeah, 7.5 out of 10. Now we're going to move on to the category that I kind of dread the most, which is realistic. Fuck, stupid fucking ring light. Ring light or no ring light, the show must go on either way. So. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and get into realisticness, which is kind of the category that I am not looking forward to, mainly because the realisticness of your packer or your toy or whatever you want to call it uh, is kind of like subjective, you know what I mean? Like it varies from person to person. What might be realistic to one person might not be realistic to another person, you know, so on and so forth. So um, this is just based purely on my own opinions of what realistic looks like in a packer. Just straight away, I do not think that this packer is like uber realistic, um, and I'll get into why, but right away I'm going to tell you it gets a 5 out of 10 on the realistic scale, and that's kind of being generous a little bit with it. Um, the main reason that I docked so many points is because, first of all, the paint job fresh out of the box is already not super realistic, in my opinion. But then, and we'll get into this more in a future category, the paint job does not last. It rubs off within like a month of using it. I got the beige one, like I said, and when I first received it, it was a lot darker in person than it appeared in the photos, so it was a bit too dark for me. However, after like a month of use, like I said, uh, the paint job completely wore off, and the base color of the packer was actually the correct color for my skin tone. So it's a bit off-putting, um, and there are some nice details on the packer, like of the actual silicone of the packer, uh, but they're not the best. I've definitely seen better out there. And also the quality of the packer itself, like the silicone quality, uh, it does last. The durability of the packer is great. However, like the sensation, you know, when you touch it, when you move it, it doesn't feel realistic. It just feels like silicone. Piggybacking off of realisticness, we're going to go into the durability category. Um, I kind of briefly touched on this in the last one, but like I said, the actual packer itself lasts crazy long. I've had this packer since, what, like 2018, 2019? Uh, I've had packers in the past where when I use an O-ring, whether that's in like packing briefs or packing harnesses, the O-ring kind of like wears down the shaft and like the ball area the scrotum area of the packer. I have not had that issue at all with this packer. It's still in great shape. The only thing that just really rubs me the wrong way is the fact that the paint job was gone within like a month of daily usage. Um, not even daily usage, honestly, because like I said, I don't pack very frequently. However, the silicone of the packer is a great quality. I've never had any issues with like skin irritation or anything like that, so. For that reason, or for those reasons, I'm going to give durability for this packer a 6.5 out of 10. So a little bit higher than the realistic scale, but again, I'm just, I was really disappointed about the paint job. I really wanted something that would look realistic for however long I had the packer. Obviously I knew that it would probably fade over time, but I didn't know it was going to fade within a month of getting the packer. Next up, we're going to talk about the wearability of this packer. So can you use it as a daily packer? How does it look in the pants and everything like that? I'm not going to show you guys me like wearing the packer or anything like that because, you know, I, again, I'm just not sure what I can do and what I can't yet. So, uh, besides the point, the wearability of this packer specifically is going to be another low score, but not for the reasons that you would think. Overall, I gave the wearability of the Peacock Gen 3S 5.5 inch a 5.5 out of 10. But the reason that it got a 5.5 out of 10 is because it's 5.5 inches. It's a little bit too big for my personal liking. No matter what type of pants I was wearing, I always felt like I was walking around with a semi. And people could just tell that there was something going on down there. And whenever I'm packing, that's not really what I'm going for. I don't want a super noticeable bulge. And unfortunately for this packer, it's just a bit too noticeable for me. If you're into that type of thing and you're into having a bigger bulge, then by all means, this packer will probably be nice for you. But for me personally, or for anybody who's like me, who doesn't really want such a noticeable dick print in their pants, uh, it's probably not the packer for you. So the last category that we're going to go through is usability. So how practical is this packer when it comes to doing what it was designed to do? Like I said, the Gen 3S packer is meant to be kind of a three-in-one. For packing, I would not really recommend at least this size of the Gen 3S. I've never had any issues with this packer in the bedroom, ever. I feel like it's a great, like, midway size, five and a half inches, not too big, not too small. 
Um, it's not very girthy, so I feel like it's a very natural feel. I've never had any issues using it with myself or with others. Um, if you know me, no you don't. Um, <laughs> the STP function of the packer, um, I just feel like it's not quite what they hype it up to be. I feel like it doesn't quite suction to my anatomy as well as I would like it to, so I did struggle quite a lot with spillage. It really took a bit of practice to kind of find that sweet spot to where I was emptying my bladder into the toilet and not emptying my bladder into my pants. You know what I mean? Overall usability for this packer, I'd give it probably a 4 out of 10 just because, like I said, I did not like it for daily packing and I did not like it for uh, the SDP function, but I've never had any issues with the bedroom function. Uh, but yeah, that's what I would give it for all the categories. So if we average all of those categories up, I'm going to go ahead and give the Peacock Gen 3 S Packer an overall score of 5.5 out of 10. Not the best, but not the worst. Keep in mind, 1 is the worst we can do and 10 is the best we can do. I really feel like the durability of this packer and the, the fact that I've never had any issues with it in the bedroom, which is why I mainly buy packers in the first place, I feel like those two reasons are the main things that are keeping me from giving this a worse score than I did. I do recommend the company, I'm not sure if I recommend this packer or this size packer from them. But anyway, that's everything that I'm going to cover in this video for this specific packer. If you would like me to talk about any other like factors in future videos, um, if you would like me to even continue this series or just stop now, <laughs> tell me in the comments, please. I'm keeping a very open mind when it comes to suggestions and things like that. As long as it's within my budget, um, I'm more than willing to try out any sort of packers or toys or anything that you guys want to get reviewed. You know, you can definitely leave those in the comments as well. Uh, please let me know if you enjoyed this video by giving this video a thumbs up, clicking that like button down below, and if you don't want to miss out on any future packer or toy reviews, go ahead and subscribe to my channel so you never miss one in the future. That's really all I gotta say, so thank you guys so much for watching, I will see y'all in the next video.